If I choose receive files, my local path now becomes, when I say my new connection, it has to be an existing folder. So let's define what local means in this context. Local means this machine, the machine that I am executing the SSIS package from. So I'm going to pick out my folder, and I'm just going to put it in the root. Uh, you will likely not have to put this in the root. You will likely put it in a real folder because you're going to have very secure permissions on this. You're going to define that only the SSIS process or the, whatever the proxy account that's running the job that runs this SSIS package has access to write to that folder or to read from that folder. Uh, that's kind of out of the scope right here, but you do have to make sure you have the permissions set for that particular folder. But so what this is, this is the machine that is executing the SSIS package. Okay? That's what local means. Do you want to overwrite the file? So if the file exists when you receive it, do you want to overwrite it? Your choice, yes or no. Okay. Uh, now the remote path, this is possibly going to look a little strange to some of you because you might not be that familiar with FTP. Uh, notice the slash, the forward slash at the beginning of this. If you're used to working with FTP, you understand that's the root of the FTP folder. Uh, if not, that's what it means, the root of the FTP folder. We're going to go down to Chapter 4, and we're going to say, I want customers.txt. There we are. Now, this is not a variable. I'm actually directly entering the path here. Okay, same up here. This is not a variable. I directly entered the value here. Now, just to make sure I'm uh, not hiding anything under my sleeves, you notice the root of the C drive doesn't have any customers.txt file. So let's execute it. Right now, it's logging into learnitfirst.com, receiving the file, navigating to the folder. It has received the file. And sure enough, there's our customers.txt. So it downloaded, it received that particular file. Okay. Now I do have to say, I did restrict our privilege in the ftp.learnitfirst.com to only being able to download. So we can't do sending of files, creating remote directories, or any deleting or anything like that. The permissions are, I didn't want to have to maintain this directory over somebody trying to put a 20 gig file in. Okay, so you're only going to be able to download files, but if you want, you can create local directories, you can do all kinds of things uh, here. So notice you're just creating that local directory here. Okay. Um, let me go back to my receive files here uh, and put this in. So it's very, very simple to do single file FTP. It's very simple to create folders, to delete uh, folders. All of that is pretty easy. Notice that if I said to uh, delete the remote files, I can pass in which remote file that I want to delete. Um, if I, I say delete or remove the directory, I can then choose the directory that I want to delete. So right now when I click that button, it's logging in. So I just simply choose Chapter 4 folder. This won't work. I would get a permissions error if I tried that because the permissions on the FTP.learn it first do not allow using that. Okay, so, and I don't get uh, a whole lot of fancy error messages here. Um, all it says is unable to remove. It doesn't say because of permissions errors. It just says unable to remove remote directory. But that's what it's for. Okay, so if you get that. So sending single files, super, super easy uh, to do this with. And um, let's see, where did I, I, I think I've changed something here. <laughs> Just to talking. Oh, receive files. That's what I wanted. And I wanted to receive customers.txt. Now, what would I do? What would be the next step? The next step, generally speaking, would be to drag a bulk insert or a data flow task and I would then go into my data flow task. And I know I haven't shown you this yet. We're going to get to it in an upcoming video in this chapter. But now I would specify that my flat file source is the text file that I just downloaded. And thankfully, this is taking so long. What on earth is going on? 
So now my flat file source, I just make a new connection manager. I don't understand why. I got plenty of memory, plenty of CPU. Um, C colon customers. Don't don't you worry about this. I'm going to show you all about what this is, and we're going to be very comfortable with this. But you see, I'm just picking it out right there, choosing that the column names are in the first row. It picks it up, and so now I would simply drag it and put it into a SQL Server or wherever. I you know it doesn't have to be a SQL Server, but I would now choose my SQL Server. Let me get rid of those. We just put it in the local host and in the learnitfirst.com database. And we'll make a new table based on that. So we'll call our table customers. And we'll make that not null, primary key. And I'll zoom in here in just a second. And we'll make this an integer. Okay, and we'll make that. 28, 128. Now I'm going to, oh, I messed up all kind of. Um, I'm actually just going to accept the defaults here and change the name. I don't want to get into uh, data types yet. We, we haven't really covered that yet here. So I just simply map the columns. And that's really it. So now I'm downloading the FTP. And then, like, if I deleted this, so there's no C drive. Just show you how this works. Make sure you uh, can see that there is no data in the learnitfirst.com customers table. So select all from, was it customer or yeah, customer? So there's nothing in there. So we execute our task. It downloads the file. When the download is successful, remember our precedence constraint, then it loaded that up into the data flow. Okay. And that's it. Pretty simple.